Hello, Internet! Welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast, episode 225, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. It is the 22nd of June as of this recording, but uh, we're going to take advantage of not posting the show the day we record it and chat about something that technically we shouldn't chat about, but since you're not watching it until the 23rd or later, we didn't violate any embargoes. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, your host, and joining me, as promised, last week, he made me commit, saying that if the embargo fell, he would be back. You know him, you love him. My best friend, Troy Blackburn. How are you, sir? <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna give you props too for keeping your promise and bringing me back on. Is the moment we could talk about Super War Legends, although we are gonna be dirty, dirty cheaters just a little bit, just a little bit, a little twenty-four hour cheating. But all three of us are in beta, so we're not violating the NDA, or we're in beta, uh, not violating the NDA by talking to each other. So I, I think it's totally legal. But let's go to our legal correspondent with a whole new headset. Ms. Quintlin Bowers, what's up, Q? Yay! Oh, wait, I'm supposed to know the legality of this? Yes, like, are we violating, like, <laughs> technically we were all in beta, so us talking together is not a violation of NDA. We are not releasing it publicly until the embargo falls Ooh, on the 23rd. Yeah, I think, I think, I think we're probably safe. I, I don't really see, and, and the embargo is falling tomorrow, so at this point, what can we say that they're not going to find out? Head start starts tomorrow. <laughs> Head Start starts tomorrow, for crying out loud, so it's not even like there's a period you can't play the game. You know what, we should probably hit the news bump and just get started. Alright, now that that's out of the way... <laughs> <laughs> now that the news bump is out of the way, we can officially talk about this. Sweet so wait, transition. Let me, let me just confer what Tez might know. Uh, if Tez has legal advice for us, we will <laughs> gladly take it. <laughs> We're good? I don't know. She looks shocked. <laughs> <laughs> We're screwed. We're all doomed. This does Death not Death bode well. Shocked. All right. If you don't know what we're talking about, then you didn't watch last week's show, and shame on you. Go watch it. It's an excellent show. Probably one of my favorites ever until, you know, today's is over, because then this will be my favorite show ever. But then next week's, I know, already is going to be better than this one, uh, because they just incrementally get better. All right, fine. Nobody's buying that, but whatever. <laughs> Let's get started. But you have a headset, so you're not wrong. So you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I am not wrong. We're talking about Secret World Legends by Funcom. So if all three of us were players of the Secret World, I believe, I know Troy, and I'm pretty sure Q, I believe all three of us played at the original launch when it was sub-based at the time. Uh, and then continued to dabble in it when it went uh, buy-to-play only and dropped the sub, made it optional, and released its issues based on a DLC-type purchase, uh, occasionally buying, having sales there. Now it is converting to Secret World Legends, basically a single-player experience with some co-op options. More co-op than MMO is kind of the way they're billing this uh, now with three-man dungeons, five-man dungeons, raids to come later, uh, but a more of an emphasis on the single-player, very small group experience. Even out in the world queue, you kind of find that there's no more than about 10 people or so in your zone that, that you're experiencing. It felt it's small. that way on purpose. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. They actually did limit it to right around 10 people. Yeah. So that's the reason why when you see about 10 people, that's why it's limited to right around 10 people. All right. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. We're going to talk about the combat changes. Huge change in the game. One of the things they were billing the most. We're going to talk about the crafting changes or... In this case, the absolute removal of crafting. Uh, instead, putting in favor more of a, an upgrade system. Maybe s some of you will uh, think it's a bit similar to Blade and Soul, the way you feed equipment to some other equipment. We're going to get down to all of it, but I think we should start. We'll go around the horn here and just kind of give our overall impressions. Are we going to play it? Save that for last. Save that for last. We'll wrap up okay. with that. But I want your beta impressions. I want how you feel about certain things. And then we'll hit a, hit a kind of a highlights list on the way down. And questions that we've seen online that we weren't able to answer because of the NDA. If you can think up uh, any of those along the way, feel free to throw in the answer. Troy, we'll start with you since everybody in the comments loved that we brought you on the show, baby. Yay. 
I've known Troy for you years. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. You start us off. Oh, man. Uh, just overall general impressions, just sort of a kickoff. Um, there were improvements made where there should have been improvements made. Uh, maybe it wasn't exactly what you were looking for. Maybe some of them weren't exactly what I was looking for. But they did address two of the serious concerns that, that really most people had into the game, which was combat and progression. And we'll probably talk about those two yep. things in more detail here in a few minutes. But they absolutely did address those. And I will have to say, I understand if you don't, but I ac absolutely love the action combat. All right, Q, your overview. Uh, well, I do agree that he's right. They address things that people were complaining about and stuff like that. The combat, I, I always said, you know, the combat was something we lived with. Uh, I am one of those people who's not terribly fond of action combat. However, uh, having tooled around with it a little bit in theirs, it's not hardcore action combat and therefore kind of less annoying to me like the action combat is well one of the many reasons i was like out of terra in you know a very brief period of time the other one being i could never get off that stupid freaking island during beta <laughs> hey now you don't even <laughs> but, have to worry about it it's not there <laughs> right but it, it did like I was playing during beta and that, and it just wouldn't let me off the island. Something glitched. I couldn't get off. I was done. Um, but the combat, you know, one of the issues I had in combat because I was playing a, I think it was a gladiator and I would notice that because you couldn't back up, right. You couldn't shuffle backwards. You had to turn around and go back that I would have to keep realigning myself to do an attack <laughs> with a lance. <laughs> like, gotcha. Which annoyed the heck out of me. This, this is not, that as far as i could tell granted i haven't had to deal with a lance so uh, but the few weapons that i've tooled around with it's 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 not as bad as i thought it would be um and i mean other stuff is just stuff that to me really didn't make a big difference like adjusting how the progression worked i i was fine with the progression it didn't bother me at all so <laughs> awesome uh, can, we, can you angle your camera down i think we lost the frame a little bit when you sat back there uh i mm. The combat for me, I think it's a marked improvement. It is absolutely a marked improvement. And I think anybody that uh, is going to be upset with it and not like it, I think even those people in Q, I think I'm kind of getting that vibe from you that it's still just, it's meh, you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world. I think even you would say, but it is an improvement. Uh, it may not be the ideal things that particularly you wanted or particularly some other player wanted, but I don't think anybody's really going to be able to deny that it is definitely an improved system over the combat. It feels great uh, moving the camera with the mouse, uh, left, right, left and right mouse button triggers. Everything's nice and sandwiched around the W key for all of your abilities. It felt very comfortable for me. I am a mouse and keyboard player. Disclaimer, mm -hmm. I should put that there too, right? Uh, particularly with this game. I'm a keyboard and mouse player. Troy, I tend to agree with you. It felt very natural, very smooth. That doesn't mean my biggest gripe with the combat was I felt there was like a lack of impact. Like, I didn't feel like there was a difference between firing off a handgun and firing off a shotgun. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like there was a difference between uh, some of the, the magic spells, between, you know, something that might freeze or slow down versus something that might combust and, and burst and blow up. I just felt like, and maybe that's more sound design or animation related than system related. I, I could see an argument for that. I still think the combat lacks some of that meaty impact. Everything feels very similar, even when you switch from weapon to weapon. It's just a question of, am I gonna be at range or am I gonna be at melee? And I don't think they, they address that as much as I would have liked to have seen. They've mm -hmm. made some animation improvements. I will give them that in, in combat. Uh, your character still looks a little goofy when running sometimes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in combat, they have made some animation improvements, but I, I still feel like it's just missing a little impact. Am I nuts on that one? No, I, I agree with you on that. Um, animation, there, there were two problems with, with, with combat, and one of the major ones has always been the animations have, have never been great. Right. And, and, and I agree with you 100%. They've tweaked those, and they're probably, if you were to look at them side by side, they, they for the most part, are improved. But like you said, it still doesn't give you a heavy impact. Yeah. To, to me, the animation still could use some work in the future, maybe. But Absolutely. the biggest the biggest difference they made in combat to improve combat for, for most folks is, you know, if, if the animations are what drove you crazy, 
you're going to get a little bit of that still in the animations with this. The biggest improvement in, in, in the combat is the way you go about using your abilities. You yeah. don't start out with weak-ass builder, 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 spender, builder, 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 spender. That was boring, repetitive, and absolutely sucked. The way they've changed it where you can start off with your big boom right off the bat and you've got a full resource meter that your energy and you spend it down and then you've got your secondary attribute that goes along with each weapon has its own unique little RNG thing that kind of goes along with it that yes is a resource but at the same time isn't always like a resource you have to pay just the utmost attention to. You do need to be aware of it but that energy bar is the main thing you're watching for, for when you run out of energy and then you need to use a basic attack or switch weapons but those are the improvements that took their combat uh, way beyond what it used to be is, is losing that generic builder, builder, spender. And now you start out with the big attacks and then you can switch weapons off or you can just use a basic to get your energy back up. Yeah, and, and all of the weapon combinations initially, and uh, if you're watching this uh, on the 23rd, I've also published today our first look. It's already ready to go for you. It goes straight from character creation all the way through the tutorials uh, and then goes through a couple of odds and ends questions that, that people may have had. So check it out. The user interface has obviously changed to accommodate the new combat system, including every class. You pick a class to start off with and it'll have a primary and a secondary weapon and as i said in the first in the first look don't let that scare you if you were a yeah. secret world player the minute you start accumulating ability points and things like that you can spend them however the hell you want and open up the other weapons and start opening up the other abilities to pick and mac match if you don't like any of the pre-generated classes uh i think the pre-generated classes will definitely help new players uh, get yes. get into a particular role and then they'll start experimenting with it but if you were a secret world player it, it's only going to take you 15 minutes before you can start really tearing apart the skill system the way you did before. So all the user interfaces have changed too. Everybody's got a lovely little graphic now, right? Everything <laughs> has its own little animation, meter building. Though I will tell you though, Q, uh, the one that I hate, I hate, I hate... I am uh, a shotgun, or in the secret world, a shotgun um, assault rifle combination. That was my build of choice. I hated going into Secret World Legends and screwing around with some of those uh, weapons in the beta that maybe I didn't really play with in Secret World. I hated pistols. I hated oh. pistols. Oh my god, pistols? <laughs> that's, that was like the worst. And the thing was, is I was kind of half paying attention the first time I went in there and I was just like, well, they didn't have what I usually, my preferred weapon set was, which is uh, Blades and Chaos. That that wasn't an option the first time I went. Yeah, in, in the first look, I ran with uh, blade and elementalism. I, I think yeah, but, but that yeah. So I'm sitting because when the when I first got in, like you know, back like it, when they first started doling out beta things, um, there they had less options than they do now. Basically, it was like the rest of these are still kind of in the works. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just went with the first one that the, I think it was the only one that had blades and, um, I got, I got in there and it popped up this thing that's like explaining the RNG on the pistols. And I'm like, barely yeah, the, the spinning back chambers. I was, like, I was like, okay, sure. And then, like, <laughs> and then like five minutes later, I'm like, wait, what? I did <laughs> like, the same thing. <laughs> I don't know what am I supposed to hit so I'm like trying to figure out how to get back to the health thing to figure out what I'm supposed to and come to find out that you don't really do anything with the pistols because it's the easy one yeah <laughs> just let it go just, like, it just does whatever it wants to do but I'm just like sitting there going I, I think I'm just staring at it and just kind of frantically trying to figure out how to get to the, the menus to, to figure out to get the help. And then when I get to the help thing, it's like, nope, there's no help thing here because we're still on beta. I think what hurt me the most on that one, Troy, is I hate, in, in any game, not just Secret World, but I hate when any in any game where a significant portion of damage or healing or core function for whatever role you're in can be necessitated on a, a random number. Your uh, RNG generated. like that? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, I, it just, it, it didn't feel right to me. It felt kind of wonky, and so I ditched pistols as fast as I could. Speaking of all of these weapons, the, obviously, the something that viewers knew already, because Funcom did talk about this, the skill ring is gone. 
So you don't have your skills and abilities on your wheel, on the big wheel, and filling it in as you go. Levels are now in the game. Um, and they were before. You just didn't see them, right? Yeah. You, you couldn't walk into the mountains there and or Transylvania right off the bat of the game uh, and without getting hosed. But Does anybody not have a horror story of walking into Blue Mountain for the first time? Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the little the little uh hotel there right off the yeah, the beginning quest there, sequence. Like, oh, yeah. new zone cool oh i'm dead oh yeah. and i'm oh. by myself too this isn't gonna work yeah. at all <laughs> uh so obviously levels were there you just didn't see them now they're front and center you have your typical experience bar at the bottom every time you level you're gonna get uh points whether they be ability points or skill points uh your skill points I, I'm, I gotta be careful not to get this reversed because I'm not looking at the, the footage. I'm, I, skill points are used for your actual active skills in your skill each Skill points weapons. are used for your passives. Are they? Action Did I get it reversed? Points. Yep. It's because of the titles. You would think skill points <laughs> yeah, would go to skills. So skill points uh, will go towards your passive abilities, which off the bat you'll be able to equip five. And then your ability points will go towards your abilities... We'll call them abilities now so I get it right in my head instead of calling them skills, which is what I want to call them. And those are your attack things, you know, your different oh, AOEs and cones and different types of attacks. So uh, if you're not familiar with Secret World, that's the, the basic way to think of it. So as you level, you'll earn your points, you'll sync them in. Um, and it, the, it's the really, flexibility it's really to... is still there, Troy, but it is very linear now. It, it is. And it, it was and to a certain extent when it was a ring, too. But I feel like yeah, it's overly I mean, really linear it now. And, 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 and part of what they've done is they've removed a lot of duplicates and yep. abilities that worked almost exactly the same. And so, yes, there's less to choose from, but there's still more than you can ever fit on your skill bar at a time. And, and going back to the passive for just a second and talking about the RNG of the gun, it, it, it's a little early to pass judgment right now on the pure RNG because those passives are supposed to play yep. a big part into making the pure RNG more controllable as you go along. Now, right. I haven't played enough pistols to know whether or not that's really the case, but that's supposed to be the plan as those passives. Like if you've got a pure it, RNG weapon, the passives can sort of help you along and make that more of a utility that you can utilize more often. So it is in the, in, in the most part, um, those passives will adjust how a lot of things about how your weapons work. However, the weapons are designed that so that certain weapons are just way easier to get into. Like you pretty much don't have to do anything. And the pistols oh, yeah. are like the prime example of that. That's what they're designed for. Now there, there are a few things with the passives. What are you doing, Bird? Um, there are a few things with you know with the passive on it that will make it, I guess, a little bit more interesting. But I don't think people should really expect the pistols to get you know way more interesting i think pretty much with them what you see is what you get and with a little bit of you know uh like cool down or something you know whatever with them don't worry about the pistols the shotgun is the best weapon in the game and i don't care that a pump action shotgun should not be twirled like the terminator it still looks badass when it happens <laughs> see what the, the hilarious thing is is when they were explaining all of this to me and the thing one of the, you know one of the things they said was that you know when they threw you in with the original game right the first weapon you're handed no matter what weapon you actually want to play the first weapon you're handed is the shotgun yeah. and most people hated that <laughs> Like, yeah, in the base game, yeah, I never like play shotgun. shotgun. Like I don't, I don't use shotgun. I, I, you know, I use like my first, my first set was my chosen sets of blade and chaos, and then because I was playing the wheel, <laughs> basically, like <laughs> the wheel was a game for me all by itself. So once I did that, I looked at it, went, okay, so I've got this much in blades already. What's the next set that I can do that utilizes blades without me having to, you know, like do a ton more to blades? And I could, so then I went, I think blades and hammers, because you know, and I worked my way around the wheel like that, so that it just kind of made it, you know, trying to kind of make it to where I didn't need to put as much into whatever the weapon, what the, the weapon I already had some of was. And I, I basically made a game out of the wheel. So I kind of, I'm going to miss the wheel a lot. And, and speaking <laughs> of the loss of the wheel, I love the way they've laid out like the, the, the multiple lines going down where you go across to unlock them because the top line, like they've separated them out. Like this is yeah. your sort of play by yourself line. And yep. yes, yes, you can use those in other things. And then at the bottom the is bottom like, you want to tank or kill, you know, this is your line. And then the middle sort of your, if you're playing in groups, this is your line. And you Yes, you can absolutely mix and no, match those, but you know what you're doing. 
but the fact that they've got them separated out to kind of keep you like, hey, if this is what you want to do, here's the line you should, you know, kind of stick to a little bit, and we're going to help you out along the way and not jank your build so you get to Blue Mountain and realize you got to go back and farm for 10 hours to fix your jank build. Yeah, Q, what is the breakdown of the three? (laughs) It was uh, top... Top was was basically solo. Bottom, I believe, when they told I'd have to go back and read it to be really sure, but I'm pretty sure bottom was groups, and that middle was kind of like a supplemental ish kind of thing. When for, you guys see for, the for skill panel, it's, it's set so, up in rows, in three rows. So you'll click a weapon from a pane on the left, and you'll get the three rows of the different abilities, and that's what we're referring to. Where it, it is definitely definitely more user friendly by far to brand new players i mean there is no question that if the wheel for whatever reason i you know after a little while i didn't think it was intimidating at all you know it was one of those things that this looks really complex and you start digging into it and you're like well i know what i'm going after so it's not complex anymore but this is incredibly easy to use. They have really, really streamlined it. And that's what we're talking about is those three rows of abilities when you select your weapon. Uh, they've even broken those abilities out into various play styles. Another thing, speaking of accessibility, guys, the tutorial is different, right? You, yes. <laughs> you automatically, to cue your point, you automatically start that tutorial with the prime. Uh, the first thing you do, basically, is pick up the primary weapon for the class that you picked at character creation. So right away, you start using abilities for the actual weapons you picked. So right away, you're getting a feel for that stuff. Not only that, there are videos everywhere. In the game, there are explanation videos everywhere. The videos for your factions are still there if you want to pick a faction, which, by the way, don't get bogged down. Secret World players, you already know that factions started to not matter towards the end of uh, Secret World's run where you could party with people of other factions and stuff like that. Secret World factions never really mattered. Right. They never (laughs) mattered in PvP. You were allowed to play with everybody else. It divided PvP, and it divided your chat rooms, and that was it. Right. Well, Cabal's too but in yeah, secret uh, world legends yeah. cabals can now be cross faction as well so you're fine there <laughs> you don't have to worry about any of that stuff did they, have they promised that already or did they say that's something they wanted to do no, I, I, I never i, I never caught the hey we're definitely doing that which is fantastic i'm glad that was in the ama wasn't thing. it I'm pretty yeah, that sure was, that was that was game. that was in the AMA, I believe. That wasn't something I asked about, and it wasn't. But it, um, yeah, it's it's pretty much everybody because it only matters really in PvP now. That's it. Which is all that should matter. Factions are so overrated in PvE. <laughs> yeah, well, because I mean, the story. Nobody cares. There's there's a flavor to the story for each yep, faction. That was in the AMA. But, <clears throat> I mean, there, yeah, there's the flavor to the story for each faction, but for the most part, and it's always pretty much been that way in the secret world where it's like, look, guys, you all hate each other because you're different organizations, <laughs> but there's this big worst thing over here that you need to go take care of. So why don't you, you can fight each other if you really want to, but, but uh, uh, that, that over there, go, go, go deal with that. <laughs> Uh, just but. to confirm, yes, that was in the AMA. I wasn't out awesome. of my mind, and I got the right source. Uh, will guilds, cabals, still be society-specific, or is there added room for cabals formed of multiple different societies? Official Funcom's answer on that AMA was cabals now allow players from any faction to join. So I'm not just making shit up or pulling it out of my ass. Sometimes I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while. Every once in a while. Uh, but yes, tutorial videos everywhere, right? We got the faction ones we've got as soon as you pick up like uh, one or two of your weapons it starts showing you <laughs> it starts showing you the tutorial video for how the on-screen diagrams are going to work and the on-screen indicators are going to work for that there's videos later when you start going through skill chains i gotta hand it to funcom on this front they have infinitely made the game more accessible not only making it free to play automatically makes it more accessible right but the content in the game much much more accessible for a brand new player that maybe doesn't have a friend playing secret world because that was the best way to start secret world (laughs) was to jump in and have a friend already playing it. But now, being more solo-focused and small group-focused, I think they really did a world-class job easing people into some of the systems that they have running, Troy. You're going to have to go to Q for a second, sorry. Oh, the dog. All right, Q. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Wait! 
Yeah, I, they did. And, and to your point on the like that, you know, addition to additional tutorials and everything, to be completely honest, I don't remember there being no. tutorials. In the no, there weren't. World. <laughs> like the, the only tutorial area was, hey, go to, well, in my case, because I played Dragon, go to the dojo, pick out a couple of weapons and tool around with it and see how you like them. And if you like them, then, you know, keep playing with them. We'll kind of give you a clue what to do. Right. And if you're but Dragon, head on tutorial- up to the apartment and go get your oral pleasure. And then uh, <laughs> and then we'll move the on. Do- I said the dojo, not, not the... <laughs> not the lesbian encounter god oh so you rolled a woman all right now that, 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 we already, i rolled a guy and i was like whoa 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 I, honestly, all right I it's gonna be that kind chick. of game i usually roll chicks because uh, i don't know if it's because you know there's more guys doing the character design or something but the chicks usually look better than the dudes i think i rolled a woman for the first look which uh by the way on the first look uh this kind of sucked uh, not only did all of us do all the beginning stuff in Kingsmith in beta for the Secret World, and then and when Secret World launched. launched, we went and we did it all again. Then beta for Secret World Legends came out, and we did it all again. And Q and Troy and I had purposely played almost all of Kingsmith on our accounts because we were, were like, okay, we're going to do a first look, but we're going to take it out of Kingsmith because everybody's first look is going to be in freaking Kingsmith. What did Funcom do? They stripped beta access from everybody, reissued press access, mm. and we had to create all new accounts. <laughs> yeah. So I had to do it again yeah. for the first look. Uh, and then when it comes out tomorrow... Uh-oh. Start all over again. Uh, let's move on to crafting, which uh, I think this will be pretty brief. It ain't in the game anymore. It is. It is, but <laughs> no. only for certain quests. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about your weapon upgrades and stuff like that. That is now handled via, basically, if you have a sword, feeding other swords that you don't want to it. Uh, I thought it was very obviously very easy. I wasn't a huge fan of Secret Worlds crafting, but I did appreciate... A little more challenging elements to crafting so i'm kind of i'm kind of torn on this one to see what i thought was a little more challenging like you had to know your patterns you had to know what you were going to build and what it looked like and everything and now it's just kind of click and feed click and feed so i think that one in my taste might have been dumbed down too much troy you look like you disagree I, I give them props for trying to do something different with crafting in the original Secret World. Um, it was definitely unique, and at first I thought, well, you know, this is cool. I got to, you know, look up the patterns, but I, I wound up just always looking up patterns and then never really getting maybe what I even really wanted out of it. I was like, wait, this is like the next difficulty, and then you had to combine all the elements into the next tier element. And that was just, it was just all too much. And like I said, props for trying to make something creative, but... I, I think I would rather just click and feed this weapon to my existing weapon and make it more powerful than than really dealing with all that. I, I, it just it, it wasn't enough reward for the amount of effort that went in, went into it. Let's put it that way. Q. Yeah, with the the crafting system, because Justin and I played together most of the time, um, and I spent a lot of time breaking stuff down and then you know into into its core pieces and then combining those pieces to create the higher versions and all of that stuff. And what I ended up with was a bank full of things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that's the, and I, it was lined up too. It'd be like you know water, right? Then it'd be like yeah, the first tier, second tier, third yep. tier. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. And then and it really ended up irritating me because it wasn't wide enough for me to have everything so that i'd just have this one row that went this way <laughs> so be like, i'm glad i'm not the only one that was like <laughs> no nope, mine was and too <laughs> and that was that was like the whole ba- and it was actually our guild bank so that he could access it and i could access it you know because i was like there's so much of this that we're getting and we're just breaking it down and throwing it in there and then maybe one of us could go in and create you know whatever web but yeah, and it took it took some time because even, you know, like until we really started getting serious about trying to do it, you know, we were just doing like you do in a lot of MMOs. Well, here's my higher grade weapon or whatever that I got off of this thing. But it, it, we realized just the two of us playing that we weren't really hitting the like the levels we needed to be at in order to go to certain places, right? Because that your weapons were yeah. part of what made your character at the right levels. Yeah, the quality so, level. 
Right. So we had to go in there and start like really playing with it and start building it out. I spent so much time just sitting there, just staring <laughs> at, <laughs> at stuff like re- reading how to do my weapons. And yes, yeah, I ended up with the bank full of stuff. So this is this is um, for like a quality of life. Right? Like I like complicated stuff like that. I like figuring out how to do it and everything. But for just a quality of life thing, like my bank was always full of just the the pieces and not, you know, cool stuff. So. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I didn't say the, the other crafting system was the best thing ever. I just appreciated that it was more challenging and more thought that went into it. And I feel like this one got dumbed down way too much. It was like yeah, this click and between. click and your necklace is upgraded. You got a necklace in your bag, feed, upgrade. You got a talisman in your bag, feed, upgrade. Uh, it just it felt very simplistic. It also maybe maybe this was just me. I didn't spend a ton of time with it. It also made it kind of difficult or kind of challenging to uh, determine, uh, you know, if a quest reward or if a loot item that you picked up was actually going to be better for you in some cases because you were looking at the piece at its base level and comparing it to something that you had already upgraded two or three levels, and, yeah. and so you're kind of extrapolating out. All right, if I upgraded this one three where would those stats be and would it you know because obviously by default it's showing as a worse piece of gear but it might not be uh once you got it up so it takes a little bit of thought there but it, it they did kind of dumb this one down a bit for my taste moving on to story which arguably is the best single best thing about the secret world it continues to be the best thing about secret world legends if you've played through the story already or through a lot of it or a couple of the issues or whatever uh in the secret world coming to secret world legends don't expect too much different yes there are a couple different quests here and there usually uh i got the feeling they were used to fill in kind of smaller plot holes that were in some of the story in the secret world so they've they've filled in a couple plot holes here and there they've streamlined a couple of quests uh or made things a little bit easier to find but i didn't at least myself uh playing all the way up through blue mountains before beta ended i didn't notice anything substantially missing substantially different uh and i am i couldn't be happier to say that troy uh yes that is the single biggest thing about the game if you've never played it now that it's going free to play if you kind of like the supernatural vibe in a modern day setting you will not be disappointed by the story and if you've played through it all before skip the cutscenes and just go level as fast as you can because you're not missing anything that you haven't already seen yeah, and there were still a couple of things in there where, like, I haven't done, hadn't done a quest in so long, I kind of forgot, and I still had to take time to figure out, you know, exactly what am I doing, what's going on here, which is what you're looking for in that game. Right. I mean, it, do, it does a lot of that. It is, that's not just investigation missions that do that sometimes. So it, it's, it's fantastic to go in, and like I said, I get people have run some of that stuff a million times, but for me, I haven't played a lot of the issues. Uh, probably most of the issues I haven't played. Those are all included oh, in free to play. Wow, now. You, you then so this is I've got, perfect yeah, for you. I mean, you get me past Blue Mountain, dude. That I've only been past like once on one character a long time ago. Oh dude, wow, it's, it's you're way behind, for me. dog. Yeah, so I mean, I've played a ton of it, but it's a lot. Like a lot of characters went to Kingsmith, and I was like, well, I don't oh, really like you, this weapon. Don't like that weapon. You got so much good shit in front of you, Troy. Oh, you yeah, don't heck even yeah, dude. know. You don't even know. I, on the other hand, bought every issue uh, and played through almost all of the content there for them. Almost uh, all of the content. And so maybe I'm a, when we get to our final conclusions, I think mine and yours are going to differ a little bit, but I think it might really be based on this exact uh, issue. Q, any thoughts on the, the questing, the storyline? It felt very familiar. I think Secret World fans that are going to play it literally can skip 99% of all the cutscenes and dialogue and all that stuff and just rocket their way back to where they were. Uh, I don't really think they're going to be missing much. But if you're new to it, nothing has drastically changed uh, that you're missing out on either. It, they left it. They, they It wasn't broke, so they didn't fix it was almost the feeling I got. <laughs> I mean, and the things that they did fix were, were weren't even story based. It was like uh, making the lasers a little bit easier to see, yeah. you know, in mission and stuff like that. Like, this, but um, yeah, as far as the the um, 
the storyline and everything goes, I, I, I think, you know, people find it's pretty, you know, pretty much the same. They did go through and do things to make it a little bit easier for you to experience the earlier parts of the story, right? Like right. changing the dungeons to where you can get in with a smaller amount of people and then the lack of the necessity for the Trinity and stuff like that. So you can get that part of the story yep. without having to run all over the place, trying to find people that are that part of the story. Um, and and um, actually, on a side note, on that uh, the that I'm bringing up the, dungeons next. So that that plus the Tim player thing. Yeah. Um, that they did say that part of part of the system is actually designed to make it to where you get like it prioritizes your friends to be in the same area as you. So you know, hopefully, you'll be doing that stuff with your friends and not just some randos anyway. Right. But. Um, yeah, I, I and they took uh, what was it like when when they were giving me the tour? They popped plopped me right into you know the summoning the revenant uh, raven chasing one, and I'm like, dude, this is one of my favorite <laughs> things. You know, this is like this was one of my favorite ones in Kingsmith. You know, like the first time around, which actually made them really happy because uh, you know, they they had worked on it personally so <laughs> but yeah they, they it, it's like it's still got your your same favorite stuff and everything else so I, I think it'll be pretty good and for people who've never you know just couldn't make themselves pay the money to get into it i think they're kind of in for a treat on that part holographic visual blood tracking was my favorite thing <laughs> wait, <laughs> I was was like, that... oh thank god <laughs> Wait, was that was that where you, the, to, where you have to follow like trails of blood, but now they give you like a little holographic visual to make it a lot easier to see? Yeah, because oh, the blood yeah, will yeah, blend yeah. right in with leaves and stuff on with the ground. The you'll be you'll stand there for three minutes going, "Man, what? Yeah, where do where I go now?" Missions where you're tracking things, and yeah, in the back of the day, you'd be like, you'd just be standing there going, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you're just moving the character back and forth like this, going, "Where to go? Where to go?" Like, let's, let's go Wife back walks in, and I'm staring at a patch of dirt outside a church. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm playing Secret World. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> what was it in the Blue Mountain area with the wolves? <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, before we part on this topic, dungeons, uh, you know, a staple of MMOs, obviously, uh, and a staple in the secret world as far as gearing up uh, along the way. Yes, dungeons are still there. Uh, you will be able to jump into them as part of the story because parts of your tier missions will lead you into some of these. Uh, but... For that aspect, the difficulty's been toned down. As Q mentioned, it's three players now, and you don't have to worry about having a tank, a healer, and a DPS to do the kind of story version, for lack of a better term, of these dungeons. Those of you wanting more of a challenge, you will still be able to play the five-man versions where you do have to have the correct party composition to do these things. That will be later gameplay, though. Uh, again, the easier version being to facilitate people going through the story. Smart decision. We've seen other games do this type of thing where there's a story mode and then a hard mode and a whatever, a heroic mode and mythic and savage. Whatever game you're playing, there's a different word for it. Uh, smart move on their part. A Q, you actually got to partake in one of those dungeons with the dev team. Uh, how'd it go? I, you know, it was, uh, other than I had a little glitch thing where I got stuck in a wall for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, it you know, it went really well and it was really easy. And uh, part of the reason they wanted to take me through it was to show me the the box, the loot box. Yeah, at the, the loot at the thing. end what? of the first monster, because the way the way the uh, the dungeons are broken up, it's by monster. So you go in, you do your stuff, you kill the monster, you get a loot box. You go through, you kill the next monster, you get a loot box, kind of deal. Um, so they wanted to to kind of show me that, but they did also tell me that uh, I forget what term they used for it, unfortunately. But it's a system to where it, it basically it, you go, okay, there's no requirements on this dungeon. Like you can basically select a thing where there, you don't have to complete the requirements, and therefore you can just kind of go in there yourself and screw around, like solo. Which I have done. <laughs> yeah. Just go in by yourself solo, not worry about it, you know, because there's no there's no requirements for you to, to, to worry about on it. So I you know, I think I think the, the early dungeon things now like I think somebody expressed concern that there wouldn't be any challenge to the dungeons at all, but mostly these 
Kingsmith dungeons are, you know, pretty much designed. And uh, there might be some in the later ones, but they took me into the, you know, the like one of the first Kingsmith dungeons um, are pretty much designed to kind of give people the idea that dungeons aren't scary. Yeah, and I didn't see where you were. I'm assuming it's Polaris. I mean, that's probably where I, they. I think it was Polaris. Yeah, because. But it was, you know, it's one of those things, right? Like, I, I hate going into dungeons and stuff with people I don't, I, I don't know because, um, you know, communicating with them and stuff like that, and you know, like I'm, I'm especially in the secret world, I'm actually a pretty good tank, <laughs> but um, sometimes you just there's just this, you know, lack of communication between you and people you don't know, and it stresses me out. It actually gives me more anxiety than, say, walking into a room of a whole p p bunch of people I don't know and trying to interview for a job. <laughs> like, because I'm like, I don't want to be bad at this. Well, yeah. if you're the tank, it's all your fault when it goes bad. Always, anyway. always. <laughs> always. All right, finally, before we give our final opinions here, we do need to talk monetization, right? It is a free-to-play game now. As Troy mentioned earlier, you will get the issues uh, that are, for if you don't know what they are, they're DLC, basically. Uh, expanded story content and, and new dungeons and new things to do and all that fun stuff. Uh, you used to pay for those. You'll get those as part of the package now. Monetization shifting more towards the cosmetic side of things, the more boosting side of things. On the cosmetics, no, I don't have a list of all these Secret World cosmetics, pets, and things like that that will transfer over into your account. The numbers we've been given are a little over 6,000 items of that nature in the Secret World, and at this time, about 4,000 plus of those items should be transferred into Secret World. Q, you're raising your hand. Oh, I was just saying 4,000. I thought you were saying 6,000 was transferred. No, 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 4, no, 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 no. I was saying but there's about 6,000 in the game and about 4,000 are making that 4, them. 4,500 was just the clothing? Yeah. The yeah. 6,000 something, that was just numbers for clothing. That's not numbers for critters. Yeah, we don't or... know anything about critters or all that fun stuff yet. Yeah, so. Uh, Sprint, that's... I believe, still goes to level six. Uh, from what I've seen in the AMA, you'll open that up. So you'll be able to, do, to sprint fast. We don't know anything about what mounts will transfer, which all it was was a different sprinting animation anyway. They weren't all that fantastic in the secret world. Uh, Troy, we don't know a lot about the lockbox stuff that Q was talking about yet, where you go into a dungeon, you uh, the, the dungeon boss drops the, the, the loot box, you need a key to unlock it, you only get a certain number of keys per day. Well... Uh, 12 keys. So once you've defeated 12 bosses, which is three dungeons, you are... Two six, dungeons. Oh, I'm sorry, two dungeons, six in each. You, uh, you're you done getting loot unless you obtain more keys by presumably buying Aurum, their cash shop currency, uh, which is also going to be used for character slots and additional You can also like use it like currency earned in game to buy right, the keys yeah. right but what we were asking on that topic q that we still don't have an answer for was does at the end of the day somebody have to buy those keys uh were you able to get keys with just in-game currency or was it somebody like troy spending cash for arum to get keys and then in turn selling those on the marketplace uh for in-game currency there's still tweaks now they're doing another they're doing a stream tomorrow where they're doing some giveaways and stuff uh, and presumably answering a lot of these questions. I'm going to go on record here and say that I'm not a huge fan of Funcom's PR. Uh, I no. don't think they do things in a way that is conducive to getting information out there the way they would probably want it. I think it's silly to be doing a stream answering a ton of the hard questions the day the your day game your goes head into start. Head Start. It's so That's asinine. silly. The number of times I've had to track them down via email to request certain things or certain pieces of information just to uh, validate a story or put something up there, uh, and then been the one after they said, okay, we'll follow up with you, that had to reach out and say, hey, 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 I'm not thrilled with their PR. But So there's a lot on the cash shop front that we just don't know right now. And that kind of sucks with Head Start starting tomorrow, Troy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to bring up. The fact in the middle of the day, which is it's 10 a.m. Pacific, I think they say it's going to be noon my time. I'm hoping Head Start's already up and running by then. Uh, if it's not, I don't know. It's going to be weird. Um, but, you know, to, to do that stream, and like you said, they flat out advertised the hard questions, the big questions are getting answered. 
most of the people who right now give a crap about your game are hopefully going to be in your game playing. Why are we waiting until right now? I mean, there's a Reddit full of questions yeah. that should have been answered, but not just like you know, silly yeah. Reddit questions throwing a fit about stuff, stuff that should have been answered by now. Uh, they're your own beta forms. We're full of questions like, hey, where are you guys at on this? We just, we just want to know. We're not telling anybody. We're in the NDA, but here it is, the day of the launch of your Head Start, and you're answering all the big questions in the middle of the day. What? 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 That should have been a week ago. <laughs> Should have been last week. So, and here's the funny thing, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Funcom's PR thing for the Secret World has not been good since prior to the Secret World launch when they fired yeah. all their ARG people. <laughs> yeah. That's how long ago it was. And, and here's, the, here's the rumor going around right now, and I'll just I'll put that as a complete rumor, but it does make sense. Uh, what they're actually wanting to do is save as much steam as possible. Huh. <laughs> That was punny. I didn't even mean to. For the Steam launch next month, they want that to be the big official. Yeah, and I was going to bring that up when we're talking about the PR here. So they are launching the client from their site tomorrow into Head Start and on the 26th into official launch. We're not going to see it on Steam until late July. And the rationale behind that from a PR standpoint was that Steam is very cluttered on the MMO front in June. They particularly pointed out, Q, when we were talking to them, uh, Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood expansion and a few other MMO-related things that were coming to Steam. And I just kind of thought, all right, if you don't want to jump into that type of competition, so you're going to back it up till the end of July... Why wouldn't the entire launch just be backed up to the like launching it on your site? You're still competing with that stuff, and you're not on Steam with those. So people actually have to know where to get it and come to your site to get it. So I kind of agree with you, Troy, that yeah, we're going to launch it on the 26th, but even they may not really be considering this the official let's go get the sales and try and get some players launch. I think they're putting all the eggs in the steam basket can, as can the I be, big Can I be PR. the one to say it? Can I be the one to say it? Go for uh, it. We're, we're open beta testing for Steam launch. Shh. <laughs> so it, I, I don't blame them for not wanting to launch the same month as, you know, Final Fantasy XIV's expansion. Yeah. <laughs> like, unless you're wow, you really don't want to go up against that. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, let's go round the horn. Final word here. Are you going to play the sequel? And I don't want to know, are you going to check it out? Yeah, we're all going to check it out. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Obviously, we're all going to check it out. We were fans of The Secret World. We've dabbled in the beta. We've dabbled in the press access. Of course, we're going to check it out. Shut up. Uh, I want to know from the, the three of us here, is Secret World Legends going to become part of your stable of games now with still questions to be answered. They're going to offer a sub. They're going to give the uh, Grand Masters owners uh, some special perks and Secret World players secret perks. Launches tomorrow into Head Start. I still have no idea what a lot of those things are, but you're getting perks. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting perks, but I have no idea what they are. Uh, so there are still some questions out there. What exactly is going to be available in the cash shop? But from what you've played in beta... Does Secret World Legends fill a spot for you that, yeah, this is going to become a game that I play maybe not every single day, but it is going to be a game I constantly jump in and out of periodically and play as one of my games? Troy. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, part of that being I am sort of... One of the target audiences that this relaunch is going for, right? You're going are. for new players or people who have played it and enjoyed it, but fell out before they've seen every single thing there is to do in the game. Yeah, you didn't see um, shit if you didn't yeah. get through Bla Blue Mountains. Uh, so uh, I absolutely am. I'm going to be streaming it probably at least three or four days a week for the next few weeks easily. Um, the world building is fantastic. The questing is fantastic. You know, those of us who played it when it was bad combat, I'm more than happy to play it with okay combat. Uh, that's just, I mean, that's just an improvement. So I want to see this world. I want to see these stories. I want to do these quests. I want to be engulfed in an MMO again like I haven't in years. This is my number one opportunity to do that. This is top priority for and me. It's not even an Secret MMO if you talk to Funcom. This yeah, is not, not an MMO. MMO. 
<laughs> but uh, but yes, I absolutely am going to play this. This is going to become a core part of my game unless they give me a reason somewhere down the road to kick it back out again. Interesting, interesting. Q. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I mean, honestly, up until this last year of, you know, moving and, you know, living in tents and stuff, The Secret World was like my weekend game with Justin, you know, us us chilling and mm-hmm. hanging out and playing. So I think maybe with Secret World Legends, we can actually get a few more of our friends in there. Like I, I know uh, Jewel is, is talking about hopping in and playing, um, you know, and everything. So I don't know, maybe we can actually get a cabal going <laughs> again and, and it, you know, not just be the not two of be, us anymore. Right. Uh, Troy, I could not agree with your comment more that you are the target demographic for this game. Um, not only new players, but secret world, the secret world fans who maybe didn't invest a ton of time into it or buy the issues or felt like, you know, I don't want to put money into the issues. Now you're going to get those for free. Uh, I think you're dead on at you're dead on Q. You and I fall on the opposite end of that spectrum with me being even a little deeper uh, on that spectrum than, than you as far as how much content we've gone through. I will download it. I will install it. I will, I will play it. I don't honestly believe at this moment, unless, like Q, like unless you're saying, you know, we get a bunch of people that are all friends, that would be enough. I mean, that'll draw you into any game, right? You, you could not be a fan of a game, but go spend some time in it because your friends are playing it and find a way to make it fun. So if it's like me, you, Justin, Jewel, some other people hanging out. Ch- Troy. Yeah, Troy. I could see <laughs> that. that I'll play my MMOs alone. <laughs> Fine. Be that way. But I've got to be honest. I don't think I have it in me to do this again. I just, I just don't. There are too many other things that I am playing that I play quite a bit of. And as much as I love the story, I just feel I am too far in it to really want to sit down and even speed go through that stuff again. And I can understand and agree with everybody's argument on the game was so good. I don't care how far I am. I'm going to do it again. You're absolutely right. More power to you. Uh, I can hear the argument of, I'm never playing this because I don't want to start it. I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with your argument, too. I fall closer to that side. I, I don't know, short of a bunch of friends, if the draw is there enough for me to want to experience so much of that stuff again. Because I, I, I almost kind of feel like I'm being held hostage. Right? I mean, I bought all the issues. I bought them when they came out. I bought them at full price, and I, and I played through them. And so I kind of feel like Funcom with a gun to my head saying, if you want to continue the story, and we've got years of story that if we shut the game down, you'll never see, go here and start over. I don't like that, and it just kind of rubs me the wrong way, and I have too many other things that I'm enjoying playing and don't have to start over again on. So... I think I'm going to say no. It's not going to hit my stable as much as I like Secret World with this, the asterisk on it cue of if there's a bunch of friends, maybe I could be coerced. <laughs> so that's our Secret World stuff. Go check out the first look. Check out their question and answer stream because I'm sure like we've already brought up there's a bunch of questions we still have heading into the Head Start tomorrow. Quickly, before we go to the bombs cue, uh, Gigantic... The shooter from Motiga <laughs> launching on July 20th. The game is actually going to come out. This game was shut down at one point. Remember? This one was shut down. Microsoft and Motiga went their separate ways, and we thought maybe this game's never going to see the light of day. Then Perfect World Entertainment picks it up. It's coming out on July 20th. What do you think? I mean, I, I'm glad for for the people who have been waiting on this that they're that they're actually finally going to get it as you know a live game, you know, rather than beta or whatever they might already be in in it because you know how that works now. Beta's just kind of live, but <laughs> for the most part. But um, I mean, yeah, it, I was actually because half the time I unless I write about this game, I forget it exists because it was what it was in beta before Overwatch was announced. 
if I remember correctly, because I think Justin was actually doing like he was part of their community and he was actually even going to to PAX or E3 or something as a representative for them. Um, and that was, I'm pretty sure, prior to, to the announcement of Overwatch and prior to the announcement of, you know, Paladins and all of that stuff. So that's how long this game has been just kind of chilling, hanging out, waiting to come out and, you know, party with everybody else. So... <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm glad they finally let it out of its room. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at Wikipedia right now, Troy uh, Q, and I don't I don't know because uh, Overwatch was announced at BlizzCon 2014, and it was basically done at that point. Everybody was kind of surprised at how far along that game was. It yes. was in a fully playable state at, at BlizzCon. Closed beta, and it was like late 2015 through early 2016. Now, when I go to the, that stuff I know. I don't know Gigantic, so I had to go to the wiki uh, and look. They said the game is set to be released for Microsoft and uh, Windows and Xbox One. The game's beta was launched in August of 2015. Now, here's the thing that I don't know about that and, and why I might think you're probably right in that it was earlier than that. I, I don't know if this was like the first round of testing they had when it was under Microsoft and then they parted ways and I, I don't remember the dates. So yeah, long story short, yeah, not... this game goes back years and almost didn't make it, Troy. Are you excited about it at all? No, it had, it had a lot. There was a lot of hype for that uh, when it was first announced back in the day. I think that's a just, big danger for them. Is that it's it, it been is. so they, they long? Lost all their hype in the very beginning, um, and you know, me and all my friends were super excited for it. But like, I mean, just we, we finally got in and played a little bit, and then it just kind of sat there, and then it sat there, and then it disappeared for a while. And I'm like, you, like, I, I'm sorry. At this point, I forget it even exists. There's a lot of other games out there that do, at least in the ballpark of what they're trying to do here. And uh, and the game looks cool. Don't get me wrong. The 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 graphical take on it looks awesome. It makes my eyeballs bleed. <laughs> it's so bright and colorful, and everything is just kind of bright. And, it's like, ah, and, and to, to add to Troy's point, what I was saying about because Justin, like I said, he was part of the community, and he went and actually did stuff for them at conventions and stuff, and he participated in like super early on. Uh, I wouldn't even call it beta testing, but kind of like panel kind of stuff or whatever. And he hasn't mentioned the game in forever. Like at one point it was like he was super invested in yeah, it. And now it's just enough, like, so the hype yeah, train came to the station invested. and nobody was home anymore. <laughs> yeah, he was super invested in it. And now and and I haven't heard him mention it. And I don't know how I think I might have mentioned it to him one time. Like, oh, hey, and he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So well, let us know what you think. Is the is it just too far gone? I'm happy for the developers and team uh, behind yeah, the game because they were there. super passionate about it. I mean, a bunch of them got laid off, and then a bunch of them got brought back on when they signed with Perfect World. I'm super happy for them. They've they're clearly passionate about this project. I just I think I think with the competition out there, it might be a little too little too late. Uh, on the on this front here uh, before we head on over to the bombs I posted a fantasy star online to first look this week and Troy is already laughing at me I don't care what you say greatest game ever <laughs> it's not the greatest game ever I mean if you look at it, it's five years old it looks a bit dated it is never coming to the west ever uh, and actually I always thought like Maybe it would, and we we have it's been a running joke here on the free to play cast. So finally, when that Twitter hoax happened, I was like, "Screw it! I'm gonna go do the English patching and and get it all." And kudos to PSO2 Tweaker and the translation volunteers that are doing that. They're doing a phenomenal job. It is a you can actually play it, uh, and I can't give it any better endorsement than endorsement than that. You can actually play it. Uh, and some people on the first look question why it wasn't on the SEA servers, which uh, had English as an option. Uh, those servers don't exist anymore. They're shutting down. That's why I did it through the proxy servers. Um, it's never coming west, and, and if for no other reason than the licensing. There is so much third-party not Sega shit in that game, in the Japanese version. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine negotiating the licenses to use that stuff in the Western market 
too. I mean, it would be a nightmare to negotiate that stuff. There's so many cross-promotion advertisements and all kinds of wacky shit in that game. If you liked Fantasy Star Online for the Dreamcast or for uh, the uh, GameCube, I believe, uh, or the PC, uh, originally, you will like Fantasy Star Online too. But you're going to be playing a slightly you know, dated game. It's five years old now already, and the graphics weren't top tier for five years ago, so they certainly aren't top tier now. But if you like some of the more uh, nitty-gritty, stat-oriented, resistance-oriented stuff, you may enjoy it, uh, instance-based. Uh, neither one of you two play it, so we're just going to skip and go straight to the weekly bombs. I'm going to get mine out of the way first, because it's not going to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> Reading both of your bombs makes me do mine first. <laughs> to get it out of the way, I gotta give overall an A-bomb to Secret World Legends. I can certainly appreciate the revamp. I know it's likely gonna draw on more people. Uh, I know those people are gonna like it. I know you're gonna love the story. I know if you had problems with the action combat. I, I, this is like the weirdest thing to be saying. The game does an awful lot right, and I ain't going to play it. <laughs> it does things that I didn't like in the secret world and still played it. It does them better, and I still ain't going to play it. Uh, I can appreciate all of that, and Funcom, I absolutely love your product. I just don't think I'm in it for the long haul anymore. I'm too far to start over like that, and I'll be waiting to see if there's ever a boost or anything before I... Uh, attempt to start back in it again. I just can't do it for a sixth time. Now, since I am like the stark contrast of both of you, I'll sit back and shut up. Q, you can go first. Oh, I thought it was story time with Mike. Shut up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no, my my devolve to Secret World Legends is just the fact that I don't have to, to, to level again, like go through Kingsmith again after this next time. That I'm done doing it after this, after tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Although I too would still greatly enjoy some sort of boost to get me past that without me having to spend a ton of time on it. Yeah, at least that first zone. Yeah, absolutely. Just saying. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, me? I'm gonna get a bit mushy. Uh, I wanna give a dub bomb to all the viewers. Well, you should, um, the way the YouTube love dude, you got um, last week. The, the past two episodes I've been on, uh, you guys have been tremendous, leaving awesome comments. Uh, and you love me. You really love me. Um, and I really oh, appreciate that. You guys have made me feel welcome on this show, and that means more to me than you could ever know. I made a list of all the nice comments about me on my phone and took them and showed them to my wife last night. I was like, look, they like me. So dub on to all you guys, the viewers. And uh, my A-bomb, I have two now. First one goes to You're Mike for not playing so Secret World of Legends. Weird. So We're gonna my, make him play. He's just gonna come play with us. We'll we'll set up a cabal tomorrow. Uh, and I'm, I'm my real, on it. My, <laughs> sorry, my real A bomb goes to Nexon. Uh, Nexon, it has taken me 24 hours to get into my own account. Um, I finally did it. Yay! But, that's good news the, for me. Thank you. What are you guys doing, man? Jeez. I needed to know that from you, so that's good news. Yeah, I'm about to talk to you about that. So, all right. Yeah, so you're gonna I'm hit me this that, weekend with but, the thing and the yes, thing, then the YouTube thing, with the, with the, all and right. the things. <laughs> All right, from the viewers, <laughs> Hellsworth says, "The bomb to vampire, pure, P-Y-R, just to be clear. From what I've seen about the game, it seems that story-driven RPGs are more what I look into games. Dark, gritty, immersive, and let's hope with great replayability. A bomb to people that think that fun is a synonym of competitive. <laughs> it's not. While one leads to a happy feeling the whole day, the other leads to frustration, rage, and an uncomfortable feeling when you win. To Magic Man in particular, question to the panel, how's that Final Fantasy XIV experience this week? I hear top-notch cues, questing bugs, disconnects, and overall bad server issues. Hashtag Final Frustration XIV. All right, so here's... Uh, it was fine for me. Why? Yeah, I had a couple disconnects, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, I disconnected. No, here's why it wasn't bad. The, the biggest thing was a quest in the, like, level 61 to 62 area um, people were having to line up for because it wasn't operating the way it was supposed to operate, and people couldn't complete it if multiple people were trying to, to do the same things at the same time. So people were lining up 
to complete this quest and waiting hours and hours and a lot of people couldn't do it for two or three days of the head start. Why didn't I have to go through all that shit? Because I had dropped my black mage, switched to red mage, which was not level 60, I had to start at level 50. So I spent the first two days just grinding out fates and dungeons from the level 50 to 60 content that already existed and has for a long time to get to 60 and then restart the new story. So by the time I came along, that stuff was fixed. <laughs> Go ahead, Troy. Can't even admit when it's bad. Uh, where am I at? To call 2399. Hey, Mike, you still uh, wiping to Robon Savage like the rest of us? That is the bug I'm talking about. Nope, didn't wipe to it once. It was fixed by the time I got there. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Q. Uh, Adrian, I'm going to start by giving an A bomb to Q. Please Ooh. take no offense to this, Q. It's a pleasure to listen to you and everyone else involved in the podcast, but I was thinking to challenge myself to take a shot each time she says, you know, and I don't know. You know what? I'm going to start saying that even more now <laughs> because I'm going to give somebody alcohol poisoning just for the heck of it. Uh, I gave that up quickly. She's kidding, you know, Internet. I'm She's kidding. Really? I am? <laughs> yeah, the bird just told me that is legally oh. liable. And <laughs> it's not my fault if they drink. <laughs> uh, I'm not much of a drinker, and I don't know. I'd probably just comatose in 10 minutes. I've also got a weekly bomb to an update. I've been waiting for some time for Gloria Victus, the combat update. It's early into the update, and they call this a soft launch of the update. And how many times are you going to type update? And then you're complaining about I drank every that. time oh. Adrian typed update. <laughs> but I am disappointed. I ain't feeling good right now. While the animations are cool looking and realistic, the combat it still doesn't feel good to me. I hope they can fix it, but for the po for the time being, it gets an A bomb. Cyberpunk girl says to bomb to MMO bomb panel and to Troy. Troy is the man. We like him. We like him too. Aww. We've liked Troy since the three of us were on Game Breaker, and it's nice to have him guesting a little more often. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, yummy, come But you, they uh, hate you and I. They just MMO. love. You know what? Next week, just Troy. The Troy to play cast. There we go. That's, that's what all the people want, Mike. Come on. Uh, all the Magic the Gathering MMO. Well, it sounds interesting, but only if they don't make it generic. We don't need another MMO that is like all the other ones. Oh, and Secret World, huh? I will wait about a year before I give it a chance. Lol. Just kidding, but I'm not really hyped at this point. They had done that a few years ago where the game was kind of relevant, sure, but it took them way too long. Uh, I agree. Like, they actually had a lot of press coverage when they initially launched that yeah. game, and they missed, like, the the premium model and everything badly when they initially launched. Q. Uh, Nisogra, to bomb to Troy for mentioning Devolver Digital Show. Seriously, go watch it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Check it out. We all thumbs that up when you talked about it last week. Uh, Neo Phantom. I really don't say that often, but to bomb to Nexon. Yes, you heard that right. They fixed an issue I had on my Mabinogi account with a response time less than 12 hours after I sent them the support ticket. Bravo. Meanwhile, a bomb to Area Games. My account is still banned. <laughs> this is an update from weeks ago. Still banned from billing inactivity, and I didn't get any news from my ticket after what? Three weeks now? So I must give praise where it's due. Nexon got it right this time. Let's just hope it wasn't a one-time thing. If Wouldn't the one thing you not want to ban people from being billing? It was. <laughs> we're, I don't know if, we're, if you were on the show. He sent me the actual email because I was like, okay, maybe you know he or she's just reading it wrong uh, and whatever. They sent me. Neo sent me the actual email. It was he was banned for billing inactivity. Like almost <laughs> Troy, you didn't spend money, so we're banning you. Go back yeah, a few episodes we don't even and want watch you. It. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead, Troy. Oh, uh, balls of fire! <laughs> I think the Lego MMO failed because of their monetization. There's a fair amount of games that survive, thrive, just because of the pre-fandom around it. Uh, Final Fantasy thrives on the fandom alone, along with Elder Scrolls, MMO, etc., etc. I'm not that these games are bad by any means, but a huge part of their success just comes from the name alone. There is not enough that can be said behind having a powerful IP behind your title. Just go look at Wildstar. Go ahead, Q! Edukata, uh, the bomb for a new Monster Hunter on consoles and PC, a bomb for the cancellation of Monster Hunter Double Cross in the West, leaving the U.S. fans with only half a game. Yep, lots of people chiming in on Monster Hunter. 
uh, on the YouTube comments, which segues nicely to our question of the week last week. What was your favorite announcement or reveal from E3? Who won E3 this year? Hellsworth says, on E3, the best new upcoming IP for me has to be Vampire, and the best reveal has to be Anthem. Agrees with Q on that one. Uh, which is what makes 2017 the saddest year for Bioware, since if they pull resources from Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem teams into just one IP, the resulting game would probably beat sales from what both games will have by the end of 2018. Then again, the Frostbite engine is crap anyway, so let's see what comes out of it. If I have to pick quality and quantity all in one company's presentation, I'd say Sony won with four good mid to high quality titles, Spider-Man, Call of Duty, Destiny 2, uh, and Call of War. If I have to pick the top three games, I'd say in order Anthem, God of War, and Vampire. If I have to pick top rehash gaming companies, Nintendo and Bethesda <laughs> by far. <laughs> Nintendo, I don't think there's any surprise that they're on the rehash list. <laughs> uh, but Bethesda does know how to milk an IP. That's certainly <laughs> true. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, Adrian, there were a couple of games that grabbed my interest, like A Way Out, Wolfenstein 2, State of Decay, Metro Exodus, and it was nice to see more of Far Cry 5 and Shadow of War. However, for me, the highlight was definitely Anthem. It looks like something I would very much enjoy. Q, everybody's all over your favorite. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Excel Kabayashi, Nintendo One, obviously. I just want to get my Splatoon too. <laughs> you can't argue with Splatoon. I mean, <laughs> they're they're making a, a little uh, thing for the Switch, like adapter gun thingy, specifically for Splatoon Two. Uh, Blah, I don't care. Eleven says Capcom for announcing Monster Monster Hunter for the PC. I never thought. They would even consider it. So much Monster Hunter love on the YouTube comments this week. Almost as much as Troy love. Go ahead, sir. Yay. LV1, uh, the best thing I saw from E3 were Ashen, Project Code Shift, Unruly Heroes, Extinction, and perhaps Vampire. Both Destiny and Anthem look generic as hell, in my opinion. Ooh. Q, bashing your title, but finish it up here. Hey, I just said it looked pretty. I didn't say I wanted to play it. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, VP Gear Chid, Bioware Anthem looks nice. I hope it plays well. Mario Odyssey has me wanting to, wanting a Switch even more. Mario plus Rabbit seems to have a nice fluid gameplay. I'm mostly a PC gamer, but I have to get a Switch when I get the chance. Devolver Stream was LOL. Oh, and I'll double dip on Rocket League for Switch. Question of the week this week. A few weeks ago, we asked you to change up the Trinity system in MMOs and how could it work? This week, we want to know how you would make a MOBA different. Gigantic coming into the shooter market. We've seen MXM in the MOBA market launch. They've got the whole tagging in and out of uh, two different people. So something a little bit different. But if you were making a MOBA right now, what would you make different about it to make it stand out against the competition? Put your comments down below. Don't forget your weekly bomb, dub bomb for something good, a bomb for something bad, or your question for the panel on the YouTube comments or right on MMOBomb.com underneath the free-to-play cast video. Until next week, Troy, where can everybody find you? Hey, twitch.tv slash noobfridge. Starting tomorrow, Friday, we will be streaming Secret World Legends as soon as it's available. Uh, a lot of you guys have already come by. Dropped a follow even when I wasn't online. Come by, check out the stream. Really appreciate it. Uh, keep on coming by. Secret World Legends for the next few days. Woot woot. Q. On the Twitters, uh, I'm actually talking on there again now, so... <laughs> Come and talk to me on Twitter. I don't I don't care if you want to be mean, that's fine. You can be mean. Okay. <laughs> I'm Mike Fern, aka Magic Man. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Magic Man1, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1. -N -N of course, while you're there, more importantly, follow at MMOBomb so that we can tweet right at you all the giveaways, previews, interviews, first looks, free-to-play cast, free-to-play weekly, and all the other news in the free-to-play world. Until next week, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers.